Introducing Earth to the Elements of Music. The clarinet has gone through many changes over time in order to make it a more user-friendly instrument. The clarinet, one of the most recognizable instruments in the woodwind family. However, it didn't always look the way it does today. Before the existence of the clarinet, there was an instrument similar to it. This instrument also played on a single reed. This means that a piece of thinly cut wood was placed on the mouthpiece, the part that was blown into, and then the player would adjust his mouth around it. If the player tightened his lips and blew into the instrument, the reed would vibrate, causing the sound. This instrument was called a chalumeau, a wooden instrument similar in appearance to the clarinet, but different in sound. The chalumeau had only seven tone folds, including the thumb hole, and had a range of about 1.5 octaves, or 12 notes. There is little information on the origin of the chalumeau, but many say, based on the name, that it is French. However, there are others say that it is Latin from the word calomus meaning a small reed, or it could be Greek from the word kalamos, a generic term for any simple wooden instrument. The chalumeau was popular and used up until the Baroque period when people saw that the oboe, a double reed instrument with a larger range, could be substituted instead. Around 1690, a person from Nuremberg, Germany named Johann Christoph Denner and his son started working on improving the chalumeau, unintentionally creating the clarinet. They achieved this by giving it a register key, a key on the back of a woodwind instrument used to reach higher notes. This extended the range of the chalumeau, but these higher notes could only be reached by overblowing into the instrument while the register key was held down. This was the first real clarinet to come into existence. Even though the clarinet was extremely different than its predecessor, the terms were often switched. The name clarinet came from the Italian word clarón, meaning trumpet, and et, meaning small. In the 1700s, a big step was going to be taken by the clarinet. For the first time, pieces were being written that included, or were specifically for, the clarinet. One of the first people to do this was Beethoven. However, driven by the complaints that his listeners made about how he didn't understand what the clarinet was for, he ended up writing pieces that didn't fit the tone quality or show off the range abilities of the clarinet. Others that also did this were George Handel, 1685 to 1759, Johann Bach, 1685 to 1750, Antonio Vivaldi, 1678 to 1741, and Wolfgang Mozart, 1756 to 1791. Another step that was going to be taken by the clarinet was the employment of two clarinetists by the Mannheim Orchestra. This was the first orchestra to employ clarinetists. In the 1780s, the task was set into place to add more notes to the range of the clarinet. During this time, five keys were added to the clarinet to expand the range. Also, the bore, or the space from the mouthpiece to the barrel, was changed, along with the diameter of the whole clarinet. The embouchure, or the way the player places their mouth around the mouthpiece of the clarinet, was also different than it is today. Back in the 18th century, the mouthpiece was what would be considered today flipped upside down. The reed was supported by the upper lip, while the bottom teeth clenched the mouthpiece, an embouchure that would be considered uncomfortable by today's clarinetists. more concertos were created. However, there was a big difference between these concertos and the concertos of the 1700s. In these concertos, the upper register of the clarinet was used much more often and they targeted the unique tone of the clarinet to lyrically play slow parts of the pieces or effectively transition from one movement, or part of a song, to another. Also, clarinets had begun to spread throughout Europe and started to become popular in America. In 1812, Ivan Moe created a new clarinet. He created a 13-keyed clarinet by adding seven more keys. Before this, several clarinets were needed to play in different keys, or which is scale a piece is written around. For example, if a piece is written in the key of G major, it is written around the G major scale. This means that there will be an F-sharp in the clarinet key signature. 
Because this sharp is in the key signature, every F played in the piece will be sharp unless there is a natural sign in front of the F. Now, any clarinet can play in any key. Muller also changed the mouthpiece and thinned and tapered the reed of the clarinet to fit the mouthpiece better. This allowed for more articulations, or the way a player starts and ends a note of, with their tongue. However, at this time, the mouthpiece and the barrel were still in one piece, making it so clarinetists couldn't tune effectively. By the 1830s, clarinets had 12 to 13 keys, depending on the fingering system. Also, felt pads were replaced by leather-filled wool. These new pads covered the tone holes of the clarinet better, and gave the player more accuracy and precision while playing. In 1838, a great accomplishment took place. Adolf Sax, the inventor of the saxophone and a Brussels clarinetist, created the B-flat bass clarinet. The B-flat bass clarinet plays an octave, eight notes, below the B-flat soprano clarinet. In the 1840s, a man named Close added rings that surrounded the tone holes. These rings, when pressed, activated a pad somewhere else on the body of the clarinet. Close's clarinet had 17 keys, 5 rings, and 24 tone holes. In 1842, Sax added right finger rings to the lower joint, or lower half, of the clarinet body. Then, Carl Behrman extended some of the keys to create multiple alternative fingerings. In 1850, the Bohem fingering system, the fingering system used on the flute, was introduced to the clarinet. This got, a, got rid of tricky fingerings that the clarinet had. This also gave the clarinet a beautiful tone color, or sound. This advancement made the clarinet have a more free and earthy sound. This is the reason why the clarinet is heard in most folk songs and traditions. The clarinet is also the instrument that best resembles the human voice, making it ideal for composing lullabies and other seasons. By now, the clarinet had taken its basic shape, size, and sound, with 17 to 18 keys, depending on the fingering system. Most were made out of boxwood, but seeing as this was an experimental time in history, people started making clarinets out of brass and silver. Some clarinets were also made out of cocos wood, a tropical wood found mostly in Jamaica. French clarinet makers started making clarinets out of ebony, a heavy dark wood from Africa. Gradually, however, African blackwood a wood similar to ebony became the main material used for making clarinets because it is less brittle and lighter than ebony. Composers also started utilizing the clarinet's dynamic intensities. A clarinet can play as soft as a whisper, and in just a breath, the clarinet can be loud and penetrating. The clarinet is a good instrument for beginners because it is easy to learn the fingerings and learn the embouchure needed to play. However, it is also a more challenging for advanced players trying to master the instrument and expand the range. In 1912, Ernest Schmidt created a clarinet with two different register keys. He did this to get rid of the weak sound of A, A flat, and B flat on the clarinet. These notes are known as throat tones. Throat tones are weak, fuzzy sounding notes on a clarinet that are only tuned by the embouchure of the player and the way that the player blows into the clarinet. Most clarinet players see this as the next change in the clarinet and a needed one. 